There we go. Welcome back. Um, and tonight, uh, we're basically going to take a couple seconds just to kind of um, uh, share like one re one little source of inspiration that I found um, yesterday that I thought would uh, be helpful because I always like to share like new resources and things of that sort with the class. And um, and then uh, right after that, we're basically going to do, uh, return to Adobe Illustrator. So tonight we're actually going to be working on uh, our brush tool. Um, and I'm pretty sure we'll be hitting that pen tool tonight too. So we're going to get in it and we're going to get into the program tonight. We're finally going to push through and hopefully this weekend um, you can uh, put some time, practice, play around with, uh, with the pen tools and the brush tools. Um, it's not homework or anything. It's just if you guys want to experiment, that's totally fine. But um, we're in it. So um, there's going to be some dynamic things running around. I'm going to be showing you some different, tool, uh, different tools, uh, some content regarding just computers and graphics and information, things of that of sort. And we're going we're gonna to fly. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very interactive this evening. So um, you'll definitely need your Adobe Illustrator program. And hopefully you have a mouse or an Apple Pen or a Wacom or something to possibly operate under. Um, you, uh, just because when, as, when, once we start using our pen tool, um, it's gonna be easier on a mouse or a Wacom or some type of like Apple Pencil or something like of this sort if you have a tablet um, versus like using your finger and a trackpad, okay? So if you're, if you're the finger trackpad person, uh, it might be a little tricky um, for you to operate this evening, but we'll see. Okay, so, um, and if there's, do, 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 okay, so I'm getting a couple messages there. So if there is no USB uh, to, to, for the mouse, oh, then we'll try to make do for, for those folks that don't have a USB um, for them. I would probably recommend if you, uh, ordering one of the USB Bluetooth mouses, um, or if there's a way to purchase an adapter, um, there is an adapter that, um, that can be purchased that can adapt to the MacBook Airs or the new MacBook Air and MacBook Pros. Uh, so then that way the, it can operate. So it's kind of like, a, it's like a USB to a USB-C adapter if, I'm, if I understand correctly. And so that could be a, a solution. So try to work with what you got this evening. Um, I'll try to see if I can find an Amazon link for an adapter. Um, to make it easier for those folks that have a MacBook that are or renting a MacBook or uh, um, or getting a MacBook on loan from the library, okay? So um, hopefully that helps. So we'll get that going there too. Um, so, and one last announcement I'll say is, is that if there's, um, for the principles of design, okay, uh, if the work's coming in late, bring it in. It's, um, I'm still giving you guys credit if it's showing up late. Um, because there might be some technical issues. Um, a couple of uh, folks had emailed me saying, I did upload the link, but um, I got a zero. So um, if that's you and you're, and you're seeing something of that sort or there's an issue with the upload, drop me a line, drop me an email, and I'll make that a quick fix for you. Um, I'm pretty flexible when it comes to assignments. Um, I would say, you know, if it's a day or two late, that's fine. If it's a week or two, then it starts to pile up because that's like six hours worth of, you know, class time that you're adding on to another six from the previous week, right? So I want to make sure that we're kind of keeping the track. And if you're, you know, a day or two late, I'm not going to dock you. I would just say, do your best to try to get it in and I'll try to give you some class time to work on it as well. Okay. So um, that's the, that's my goal at the end of the day is to get the lecture in quick so we can start working and um, applying some of the content. Okay, and um, so that's the announcement on the assignments. And if you have questions, drop me an email or send me a direct message. I'll do, I'll do my best to answer those questions. Okay, all right. If that makes sense, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji, um, and then we can kind of go from there. Okay, okay. So let's um, let's talk just briefly about the pen tool, or not the pen tool, but Adobe Illustrator and the toolbar. So. Um, we should be good on the toolbar exercises, right guys? And um, we, we pretty much took some time on Tuesday to go over a um, exercise, which is the uh, toolbar exercise, labeling all the parts uh, of the toolbar in Adobe Illustrator. Um, we did that for the, just to, for the sole purpose of getting vocabulary down. So we know where is the broad blush tool? Where is the, you know, pen tool? Where is the, 
a you know a fill and stroke of the toolbar. So we just know where things are located. So we have a common vocabulary. So that's generally the reason. And if you got that in, um, thank you for doing that. We are basically uh, we were going kind of back and forth between the app and Google Slides to label them. And you guys did really well and uploaded some samples um, and keep those coming too if you haven't finished them yet. But we're basically just getting a common vocabulary of what the toolbar is, what it does, and um, essentially um, getting a, a feel for the hidden tools or the sub tools that I call them. Um, there's tools inside of other tools, as you saw. So there's a lot. There's a lot of bells and whistles inside the program. So um, everyone knows basically those sub tools. Hopefully we do. And now we know how to collapse, you know, to a single column or a double column for your toolbar um, as well in Adobe uh, Illustrator. Okay. So if that's making sense, you can give me a little thumbs up. I just wanted to make sure that that um, was working okay for everybody and that that assignment was pretty straightforward. We have a good per percentage of the class on it and completing it. And if you're still working on it, um, get those in too. Um, uh, as soon as you can, it's basically just labeling the parts of the toolbar. Okay. And if you have any questions about this, uh, you can drop me a message or send me an email and I'll be more than happy to flex some of that time. Okay. So we know where those tools are at and we got that going to, as well. And basically, um, if we just look at the interface, when I was launching today, uh, the program, um, I noticed that there was a, you know, a couple of updates that I didn't see probably cause I didn't do the most uh, recent update. Let me move my toolbar here. But basically I noticed that there were some, a couple of new additions like the rotate view. So we'll take a look at that in a couple of seconds, but now um, you can rotate your artboard in, in Adobe Illustrator, which is really cool. And, um, and now we're starting to see more um, integrations of the uh, new Silicon M1 chip from Apple. So um, basically the, the, the new M1 chip, it what took because it's a new chip, a lot of companies like Adobe and any, many other software companies were figuring out how to make it work um, with the chip to uh, optimize performance. So now it looks like um, Adobe finally has um, figured out ways to get the M1 um, to work with the app and configure properly to the new computer. So if you guys are uh, looking to upgrade your computers in the near future, um, Adobe has now um, done its due diligence in upgrading its performances, and we should see improvements in performances for computers this year and for in the years to come. So that's a, that's an exciting update there too, which, which should be really great. So I'm looking forward to seeing those updates as we're um, moving forward. Okay. So cool things happening in that world, and um, I'm pretty happy for it. And then of course, we kind of took a look at our interface and we basically mentioned that um, within the interface of the program, we have uh, certain things such as cloud documents, which is how I'm going to know if you guys are uh, working on your assignments and what your statuses are, which we'll see in the coming weeks. In fact, I might be able to roll it out today. We'll see if, if we can integrate today or not. Um, so we talked about cloud documents, which is basically uh, sharing files amongst your peers via email. Um, you can have two people in two different locations in different parts of the world uh, sharing documents. So that's kind of cool to have cloud documentation, uh, cloud, <laughs> cloud documentation. And um, you can even see if things are being shared, which is really cool. And um, typically when things are being shared, you can see it right in the interface. So um, I have nothing current, probably because it's a little bit older, probably some things that may have deleted. Yeah. So. Um, which is really nice uh, because then you'll know what's been shared, what's not been shared, who's sharing it, and what's the status updates and things of that sort. So I love the uh, cloud document features and it's a really nice uh, thing to have when working on your different projects um, and also collaborating with other people in class. So we'll definitely have some opportunities to do that in class too, okay? Um, all right, and so we saw that, which is really cool. Um, home screen was basically telling us all the different templates that was available. So that's really nice. And then of course the learn tab is really nice because let's say you want to get some more practice on any subject or get a feel for more features. Um, Adobe now has it integrated into the program, meaning that, um, and we can actually just kind of click one of these and see that when you um, launch um, one of these tutorials, It'll basically take you to a web page, which I'll open up right now. 
and it'll run you through some of those basic training and skills um, and give you videos about the interface and give you a basic tour of how things operate and how they all kind of work, which is uh, pretty nice. So um, they do a great job of kind of making it as uh, seamless as possible and knowing all the tools and how to explore with it, right? Kind of takes a little bit of the, uh, the fun out of teaching because technically these are things that I'll tap into at one point this evening, right? But um, these are great because now you can uh, take a look and get started pretty quickly by looking at all the different features, creating and editing shapes, things of that sort. Um, really good stuff. I mean, once upon a time, we didn't have this, right? So, uh, you know, teachers like myself, we had to like create these, share resources, build them. Um, now it's all integrated into the program. So I'm so jealous about it, right? Because it's like, well, I had that idea or I did that or that's similar, or they actually have some really cool um, lessons built into it that you can uh, uh, take uh, take for a test drive and see how it works for you. So if you have time uh, or any time after class over the weekend, um, definitely take a look at some of the tutorials. It'll definitely increase your um, your skill set and allow you to get into these tools um, that much better. And I would even recommend it for you guys to check in on some of these uh, tutorials um, at least once or twice. Uh, you know, a year just to make sure that you're getting the most recent content or when a new program version updates, that you're looking at the tutorial on the learn tab. So you're getting updated as frequently as possible. Um, you know, as designers, we live in a world where these programs update annually. So I pretty much would say if that, if you don't look at your annual updates for five years or more, you will be significantly behind on things that could be improving your your workflow right so learning 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 lifelong learning is super important and um and adobe and does a really good job of applying this to all their programs so you can get up and running pretty quickly whenever you um, you're using this program even after the a class so um you know it's great to be in class i understand the value of students to, to be held accountable but if you like to work independently or just do 17 minute little tutorials and just uh, just freshen up your skill set, this is a great way to do it. They try to save time and get, get you to doing things quickly, okay? So I really like that feature as well. So good stuff for Adobe, really happy with the, how they're integrating and working out some of their uh, systems. So I'm really happy for what's going on there, okay? Um, so we have that happening. Uh, we created a new document or at least um, learned where the new document is on the left here. So when I push on the create new button, we have all our lovely templates that are available for us. Um, some are more the most recent ones. So I like to do custom layouts for different occasions. I do laser cutting um, during my day, uh, my, uh, my day job, which is, uh, you know, teaching engineering. So I do a lot of more custom layouts so i will i literally use illustrator to laser cut graphics so think of it as stickers but instead of vinyl i'm cutting onto wood and so um you can use illustrator programs to basically or illustrator il drawings to not only do things like um stickers but uh, you can even do laser cuts and i think i might have one floating around that i definitely can show you guys um but it's really 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 cool some of the things that you can create with it uh, logos, names, stickers. I mean, um, it's kind of like those cricket, um, you know, cutters where they cut like vinyl and you see those at Michael's. This is a laser that shoots basically 75 watts of pure energy onto wood, aluminum. Um, it's, it's very similar to something like that. You just have to know the, some of the functionalities. Very cool stuff. So I use a lot of different layouts and, and different uh, template sizes. Okay. And on the up uh, in the top section, I'm just doing like a quick little recap of, of what we saw. You'll see different options for templates, obviously. So we have mobile, uh, we have web, we have print, we have film, video, art and illustration, right? And um, what I love about the, these uh, new document templates built in is that you basically have the options of picking things like mobile uh, preset sizes. And not only that, you can even get um, templates that kind of allow you to uh, break into these things. So you can you can do things like build an app icon kit 
or actually build um, an interface for an app um, for a client, let's say. Um, you can design uh, buttons for, for your apps if that's something that you wanna do or flyers. So there's a lot of great templates that are built in that just allow you to get to your final presentation very quickly um, because we want Adobe wants you to do more designing, more creating instead of actually uh, working too much on the presentation stuff. Okay, so web is great. Uh, you have templates for web. I would probably recommend this if you're doing um, any type of portfolio is to use these templates to update your portfolio. Um, that's kind of how I like to do it and how I prefer using it. So anytime I want to show something. I want to yeah, create a really good presentation for like a supervisor or a client. I'll jump into my templates. I'll grab a template and I'll and I'll basically plug and play uh, my design and modify it accordingly. So um, this is a great way to build a presentation fast um, and and show it to your client in a professional manner. Okay, so I love that um, aspect as well. So templates is really a great thing. Um, they're not really easy to find unless you click onto your new documents and look below it. Um, but uh, maybe in the future, they'll fix the interfaces a little bit and, and see where it goes. And um, if I were to download it, it probably takes like a couple of minutes to download it, but it'll basically say, you know, see the preview, it'll launch it on Adobe stock, which is kind of like a free stock, um, free stock for, uh, of images that are given to you as an Adobe subscriber and you can preview it, download it onto your program um, and instantly get ready and be off and running. So that's a, a nice feature to have too, okay? And you can even search for more uh, templates below under Adobe Stock. So uh, that's something nice to have as well. Okay, so we created that new document, like we said, um, and we basically used that pen tool to operate it and we had our interface, okay? But before I get further into the interface, I kind of want to ask a quick question. Um, regarding just the way these programs kind of build graphics, okay? Um, just by a show of thumbs, like how many of you guys are familiar with just like how a computer creates an image? Like how your screens create images, things of that sort. Okay, I sort like kind of sort of maybe, how many of you guys feel like you're not familiar with like just computers and screens and the whole idea of pixels or vector, anything of that sort, if you're, if you feel like not necessarily, you can give me a little X and you can probably say like, oh, I'm not too familiar with that when the technology side of things. Um, and if not, that's totally okay um, because we got a little presentation for you and we'll talk about that right now. So let's see. Okay, so we have, I saw a few, few thumbs and a few waves happening there. Okay, well, let's, Let's just kind of briefly um, kind of talk a little bit about like how computers create images. I'll just, we'll start there first, okay? Um, it kind of ties into that little extra credit assignment. So it's not the actual assignment. So I'm gonna just kind of share some key notes, footnotes about what computers do to create a graphic, okay? So as you're moving into this field of graphic design, um, it the knowledge of computers does increase. I mean, I wouldn't say you're going to turn into like a like a Mac Pro, but you do get pretty close to it or a PC expert. You do, you do get pretty close to this stuff because you do start asking questions like, does the M1 chip perform really great for the new program? Because I need to save two seconds on my jobs or, or you know, to, to process it. It's interesting how like the more you use your computer as a tool for work, side projects, it turns into like you becoming slowly the expert on computers. So I didn't know much about a computer until I started really doing this field. And I literally crashed computers, thrashed my old Macs. Like I, I had no money to, to basically buy a new one. I had to learn how to fix my own computers. So um, I went to Fry's a lot, which if you, Fry's Electronics, which is not around, but if anyone remembers Fry's, um, I'm that I'm I'm that kind of guy. I went to Fry's to buy my electronic components and basically hack and fix it on my own and save hundreds of dollars. So, um, but before any of that stuff, I was always into gaming, and this is probably the best way to kind of express a little bit of like how computers create images. Um, Super Mario. I don't know if anyone's ever played the, the original Super Mario game, but you know he's a bitmap image. There you go, James. He is a bitmap image, 
Um, and a lot of these characters um, were created basically using raster images, right? Or pixels, as they say. How many of you guys have heard of just the term pixels? I'm just curious to know. Uh, give me a little hands up or th a thumbs up there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty much a common term, right? Um, maybe 15, 20 years ago, not everybody knew what a pixel was, right? But, uh, cell phones definitely increased that uh, knowledge dramatically. But basically there's two types of, of uh, images that are created on a computer. Um, we have, you know, your raster images, which are your bitmaps. And I'll just kind of jump to this image. And then you have your vector images, um, which are basically sort of like lines that are created, uh, that lines that form an image, right? Um, Photoshop, typically it falls under the left, which is your raster images. Um, and then vector, it falls under your right. And so, which is kind of like your Adobe Illustrator program, right? So Adobe Illustrator is more of a vector program, right? And the uh, Photoshop is more of a bitmap or pixel-like image. And here's kind of like a, a nice sort of, you know, difference between the two um, is that, you know, Photoshop basically will take all these, you know, pixels or your screen basically will take all these pixels to create an image. Whereas Illustrator, you're um, creating what they call anchor points and, and the computer connects the dot, right? So it's kind of like connecting the dots. So you literally start to become sort of like a, um sort of like those connect a designer of connecting dots so you're like basically designing a connect the dot book and the computer's connecting the dots it kind of feels like that when you're using this program um so um takes a little getting used to but we'll get there pretty pretty quick okay and i'm not gonna go too too deep into like what are the features of raster um but i will say um just you know a couple of things or a few things related to it right Photography and video loves raster images, right? So if you if you if you're taking Professor Gardos's or Professor Holden's Photoshop class, you may have heard it already. You know, uh, raster images, pixels, those terms. Um, really great for photography and video, right? More pixels, higher equals higher resolution, right? Um, and you can reduce it in size, but it loses quality in the image. And if you don't know what I mean. Um, basically, this is a, a nice image that kind of illustrates that. Um, you know, anytime you take a picture that's small and make it bigger, if you see those squares in the middle um, and it looks, quote, blurry, those are pixels and they make up your image. And so um, every image on a screen, on a cell phone, on a tablet, um, is basically uh, made up of these little tiny squares called pixels. And if you've never seen a pixel before, then um, basically, if you zoom in really close to your screen, you'll have basically a little pixel square made up of red, green, and blue lights. And those lights are so tiny that they add up to thousands. And when they light up, they light up in different brightnesses of red, yellow, and blue. And when you even look at some tablets, they even put them like two layers, one on top of the other for maximum uh, retina displays. But when you zoom out, all those images create a color, a graphic, a letter, which basically turns into your image, okay? Which is kind of crazy when you think about it because, you know, some, you know, you basically are playing with the eye at that point, right? Um, you're, it's a, it's like an illusion. So um, because our eyes, um, you know, are picking up certain frequencies of color, um, going back to Gestalt psychology, Basically, when you can, when you, when we see these colors and these images combine, we try to make sense out of that graphic and turn them into shapes, colors, objects, connecting those images, and that's literally how we create that graphic. So, if you were to zoom in really quick on that screen, you'll see these little tiny red, green, yellow, blue pixels on your screen, and so that's pretty much how your computer, your cell phone, creates an image. And it mixes those colors in really interesting ways. Um, basically, um, when you mix like red and green, you get yellow. When you mix um, green and blue, you get more of a cyan color. Red and blue equals a more magenta-like tone. Um, but when you combine red, green, and blue, you get a pure white. So these um, shades of red, green, and blue on a screen, it pretty much um, adds up 
to millions of colors. Um, I think the math goes like for every one pixel, it generates uh, 256 shades of red, green, and blue, right? So um, when you take uh, those channels, those three channels, um, and basically, you know, times the number of colors by the number of channels that are built into it, um, you can produce like pretty much, you know, over 16, 20 million different um, color options on a screen, right? Just by doing simple math. So it's pretty insane um, how, how it all kind of operates, but essentially we can get millions of colors just by mixing these three colors, red, green, and blue. And um, when you can mix those colors, you're not only mixing the colors, you're mixing the different brightnesses and the different shades. And that's how, you're, how we create images on a screen, essentially. Um, you got millions of those pixels or thousands of those pixels, which adds up to millions of shades of colors. So when, when you see those announcements on Apple or, or, or Microsoft and they say, oh, it's you know, 1,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels or 700 pixels by 700 pixels screen, they're basically saying like, we have more pixels, which means better image quality. Does that make sense? And so that's basically how it breaks down when it comes to your image uh, there. And I can get really deep into it, but I will um, talk about Vector because that's where we're gonna live for the next few weeks. Um, but basically Adobe Illustrator is all about vector graphics, okay? So vector graphics is just a fancy term for uh, basically uh, a line, right? A vector, a one, between two different locations. There, that the, what connects the two dots or the two locations is a vector. It's the shortest distance to get to those two points, right? Um, we think of them as lines, you know, mathematically they're called vectors on a computer screen. And when you're, th when you're thinking about vector graphics, think about fonts, right? The fonts that we have on our computers are made up prim primarily of vector graphics. We talked about that a little bit. Um, the maps, Google Maps, Apple Maps, those are all vector graphics. If you zoom in, they get bigger, they get smaller, you don't lose image quality. So those are all vector graphics, right? At least when you see the line version of it. Um, and there, the fancy term is resolution independent, which means bigger, smaller, the, qu the quality is always really, really big uh, or good or high. And they are, there's some math involved in that. So I'm not gonna uh, put you through that this evening in terms of like how the math works, but if you're interested, see me after class, we can, I can show you how the math works. Um, but basically the computer is doing the math for you and calculating these lines and generating uh, an image between the two points, okay? Uh, and they're really good for the internet too, right? Obviously, so they're very browser friendly, okay? So if I, if I had to tell or ask you guys um, a, a simple question, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, Vector versus Raster, which one of these images would you say um, is a bitmap or, or raster image, pixels? Um, or a vector graphic drawn using Adobe Illustrator. Um, we'll take a fun little vote here or have, it'll take a couple seconds to vote it out. But how many of you guys think it is the uh, glass um, that is a, let's say it's a vector graphic, so drawn in Illustrator. So how many of you guys think that this image highlighted in the red is um, an Illustrator image or drawn in Illustrator? You can give me a thumbs up on those. Okay, nobody there, totally fine. Let me move this out of your way. I wanna make take a tally. How many of you guys feel that the um, glove is a uh, vector image drawn in Adobe Illustrator? You can give me a little thumbs up emoji there. Okay, a couple folks think that is, no worries. All right, how many of you guys think that the uh, model here the young lady is a, a vector illustration. You can give me a little thumbs up emoji. Okay, very cool. Uh, the answer is, is that they are all vector, believe it or not. Um, they're all drawn in Adobe Illustrator. So um, this shows the power of the program. Not only does this program um, create, you know, flat, quote, flat graphics. If you put in the time and a little effort and really push the, the, the tools, 
you can make an illustration um, look like a photo. So this image of the of the woman, it's it look. I mean, she is drawn in the program basically, um, and it is amazing, right? Probably took days, if not weeks, to kind of create something like this. And yeah, I would agree. It's probably easier to take a photo, <laughs> right? Um, and just modify it in Photoshop. But I just wanted to show this image so that you guys get a little idea that this is a pretty cool program and it can do a lot if you really push it to the limit. So just a short word there, okay? So that's vector versus bitmap, okay? Um, in like two seconds. But essentially you're, when your screen, your computer will create images using pixels, but, um, but when we're creating images in Adobe Illustrator, yes, we're basically creating vector graphics, which does translate via pixel on your screen, um, but we're gonna generate two-dimensional graphics using vector lines and vector illustrations, okay? So that's the idea there. Um, we do have a small extra credit assignment. So basically we're not gonna work on it this evening, but if you are interested in doing an extra credit assignment, then you can create some pixel art if you want to um, using uh, pixelart.com. I did include that um, in Canvas, but if you wanna make some points or get some extra points um, or you're missing some and you wanna recover some points, then you can uh, create a couple of characters using pixelart.com upload it and then you can get some points there okay so that's a small little extra credit assignment where you can basically create your vector graphics and create pixel characters there and set it up um you don't i don't think you have to necessarily create five images i would say if you want to create an image or two that's totally okay but it's a great way to kind of play with the program and understand pixels just a little bit more if you want to go into that direction okay so if that makes sense email a thumbs up emoji and then we can kind of go from there okay and if you have any questions, um, you, you can definitely um, let me know and then we can kind of get there. So yeah, it's really amazing. Some of the stuff that's um, happening in that program and everything that's possible, it's wild. So I totally agree with you guys. It's really, really good. And it looks pretty amazing um, for what the operators do and what the designers do. So love it, love it, love it. So yeah, and so monitors, everything of that sort is great. And um, I'm just reading some of the support screens here in the chat. So it's great stuff, but very cool. So awesome. All right, let's keep it going. Let's actually start creating some images. How about that? And let's start talking a little bit about the, and switch over here. We'll talk about the brush tool exercise, guys. So I'm gonna switch over and so we can get that going. I have so many decks. It's pretty amazing. Okay. And let's close that out so we can see that as well. Okay, so Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so we basically kind of broke down a little bit of some of the functionalities, okay? Um, let's talk about this little uh, faces exercise, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do um, is that we're basically gonna create um, a couple of faces or abstract faces um, using the paintbrush tool and the blob brush tool, okay? So we can kind of see the differences. Uh, now, these tools um, are um, already kind of set for you, of course, in the program, and I do have a file that's available. So I'm gonna walk you through how you're gonna download it in a few moments. But basically what we're gonna do is that um, for, the in, for the orange faces, you're going to, or the orange outline of the face, you're gonna use one, uh, which is the paintbrush tool. And then for the blue um, face or uh, blue outline, you're going to use the blob brush tool. Okay. And we're going to basically operate in that level. So uh, one tool is going to be this one in orange, and then the other tool is going to be this one for the blue. Okay. And we're going to walk through that and have a little bit of fun creating some abstract faces. So we're going to get that going for you. So I'll walk you through that momentarily. Make sure I don't miss anything here. And then right after that, we're going to try to do at least one pen tool exercise for tonight. So I'm going to try to beat the, my clock and see if we can at least start and introduce you guys to the pen tool this evening. Okay. And I think we, I think we'll have enough time to do that so that we can kind of get the ball um, going there and, and things of that sort. Discussion. Oh, yes. So good reminder there, Philip. Um, we will definitely 
go over the discussion too. Um, let's actually, I want to kind of save that between the two assignments because I'm kind of eager to get the faces. Um, the discussion for this week is basically a short story about the illustrator, like the founding of illustrator. So it's more, it's more informational and anecdotal than anything that talks a little bit about the program and its history. Okay. So we'll try to save that a little bit, or if that works for everyone, we can kind of make that a small, um, just a small video assignment that we could save for the weekend. If you want, you're basically just watching the video for about 20 minutes and um, making some, and answering some questions about the history of Adobe and what were some things that you discovered about their um, found the about their founding back about 40 some 40 plus years ago, uh, which I, I believe when they first started up in the early 80s, I believe. Will that work for everybody? So then that way we can kind of jump into some painting and some tools and operate some of the functions of the tools there. If it does, you can give a little thumbs up emoji. Ah, okay. So I'll make the modification for the for the I'll change the due date there when we take break. So I'll make that modification for you guys. Perfect. Cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. So let then we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna create some facial expressions um, using the paintbrush and the blob brush tool. Okay. And I'm gonna walk you through on Canvas. So um, we'll go to Canvas right about now and we'll start formulating some tools here. So let me go ahead and switch screens. And we should see it already under assignments, but I'm gonna open up and pull that up from there. And we're gonna to go to 164 here to retrieve that. GDSN 164. And switch screen so we can take a look at that. Okay. And I'm going to alter my views a little bit so we can get this going here. Let's go to student view. Okay, and uh, close orientation. And close orientation. And here we go with week five. Okay, so um, so under week five, obviously we have the uh, discussion post right above. So we're gonna go to uh, assignment. Where did we go? Let's go ahead and launch that actually, so we can get that going. Uh, okay, we, we'll leave the student view and then we relaunch that for you really quick and get that going for you. And archive week three, week four. Here we go. Paint and blob brush exercise. So we'll go ahead and launch that. Perfect. And then when I switch back to student view, we should see it active there. And hopefully you should see a notification pop up on your phones and our email saying that it's there. Yes, assignment paint and blood brush exercise. And that'll be this one over here. We're gonna change that due date. No, actually the due date's accurate. October the 5th should be okay. We might be done this evening for it, but we'll get a little bit of an early start. So we'll click on to assignment paint and blob brush exercise. Okay. And you'll see a little uh, six minute video that kind of repeats the process. Um, so at a, if at any point you get a little bit lost, you can always repeat that uh, video. But the objective here is to design um, some abstract facial express expressions um, using the paint and blob brush tool. Okay. So it's more about creating those free form tools and paths to set it up. And right here is a link that says click here to download. Um, if you click onto that, you should see a Adobe illustrator file ready to download. 
So when you click onto it, you'll see like one face there. So here's an, an example of like what a face could potentially look like. So we'll work, we'll work out how we can get to that in just a moment. Okay. Um, but we're going to download this file. The way you can download is on the upper right hand side. Um, you'll of uh, this Google Drive file, you'll see a little arrow pointing down. That means download. Go ahead and click onto that. And if you have a Safari, it'll download on the lower left hand side of your um, excuse me, your Chrome browser, I should say. If you have a Safari for Mac, it will it would download on the upper right hand side of the browser. So you'll see like a little uh, downloader on the upper right. Um, for Chrome, it's on the lower left. Okay. All right. Once it is successfully downloads, uh, it's a relatively small file, so it should go pretty quickly. Um, once it's downloaded, go ahead and click onto it, that file. Um, you can click onto it once and it will open the file and also launch Adobe Illustrator if it's not open on your computer, okay? But if it is, it should open um, automatically. So I'm gonna click onto it, switch over to Adobe Illustrator, and we should see, oh, move this out of the way. We should see something like uh, this on your screen, okay? And hopefully you do. If you, and if you do, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji um, just to make sure or give me a thumbs up that you could see that. So, okay. So if, if, you, if it's not showing up, um, did it successfully download is the first question. So do you see the download? Um, and if you did download it, um, what is the browser? Is it um, Google or is it the, um, sorry, is it the Chrome browser or Safari browser that is the launching program of choice? Safari will always be on the upper right hand side. Um, set that up. So. And if it's Chrome, it should be on the lower left. Yeah. So if it's on the lower left, you should see something on the lower left that, sh that shows up. If not, maybe the browser is, go is a little bit past your screen. So maybe try to make the window of Chrome a little bit smaller um, to set that up. Okay, and if Illustrator's not opening, hmm, it should technically open for that program. I would say try to see if, the, if we can, hmm, got it, it's opening? Okay, hopefully it does. We're having a conversation here in private, so that's, that's totally fine. Okay, so I'm glad it opened. Okay, is anyone else not, uh, not seeing the program open at any point? Okay, everyone's open there for the most part. Okay, um, okay, and if, it, and if you're just watching me, um, this is the part of the class where it's like, Oh, he's going to have me work in a couple of seconds and check in on me. Yes, I'm going to be checking in on you guys to see and make sure everything's okay. But let's just, let's go over basics with your hand, okay? So uh, let's just talk about keyboard and functionality and things of that sort. Um, I, if you have your mouse, obviously we draw with our right or I draw with my right and I use my left hand, right? Um, just really quick, just for, just for like quick tips on quick keys and things of that sort. If you hold down your um, your the space bar, whether it's your thumb or your finger, uh, if you hold down on the space bar um, inside of Adobe Illustrator, so you might have to click onto the program and be in it. If you if you hold down the space bar, you should see the arrow here go from a black arrowhead sort of like selector to hand. When you see the hand, okay, click and hold the mouse down and move your mouse left, right, up and down, okay? What you're basically doing there is that you're moving your artboard around, right? Think of it as like a sheet of paper or multiple sheets of paper. Um, I always like to move across my, my artboards using my spacebar um, and click or spacebar click, um, left click on the mouse technically. And that allows me to move my, uh, my artboard around, right? 
And then, and the reason I say that is because sometimes students like to kind of use the bottom handle or scroll up and uh, up and down to kind of move around on their interface. Um, I like using the space bar and just clicking or left clicking and holding it down and moving it around because that just gives me a lot more fluidity, uh, fluidity moving my artboard, right? So it feels very natural to me. I feel it feels very comfortable, I would say. So I kind of like to move around this, um, my artboards left and right and navigate my tools that way or my artboards that way, whether it's one or multiple artboards. So that's, um, that's basically um, um, ad adjusting or moving your artboard around, okay, using that handle. The other thing I kind of want to bring your attention is uh, zooming in and zooming out, okay? There's different ways to zoom in and zoom out. So I'll, I'll share a couple of, of ways to do it, okay? Um, one way is, you, is that if you have that scroll wheel, oh yeah, you can scroll wheel, wheel button, you can move it around as well. Thank you, James, yeah. So the scroll wheel button on a specific type of mouse can also move it as well. So you can do that too. Um, zooming in and zooming out. If we wanna zoom in and zoom out, um, what you could do, there's a couple ways that you can go about doing this. Um, for a Mac, uh, Mac computer, if you or Apple computer, if you hold down the Alt Option key, which is um, two buttons to the left on, or right of your spacebar, you'll see a button called Alt Option. Um, you can use on a PC the, um, I believe it's the Control button, if I'm not mistaken. And you, what what you can do on your Mac is that if you hold down Alt Option and with your mouse scroll up and scroll down, you can zoom in and zoom out of your program, okay? Does that make sense? Does that kind of help me a little bit? So the Alt Option key is really cool um, to scroll up and scroll down. And what I typically like to do is like, I like to kind of scroll in, scroll out, space bar, move my option, move my artboards around, Alt Option, scroll up, scroll in to see a page. Does that kind of make sense? So it allows me to navigate those artboards pretty, pretty quickly, pretty comfortably by using my quick keys. And a quick key basically means I could do things a bit more quickly. Um, and using my my uh, mouse, using my mouse in combination with my keyboard. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. Uh, zooming in and zooming out is Alt Option. Okay, and Control lets you move from side to side too. Yes, perfect. So that's very helpful. Thank you, Nidia, appreciate it. So yeah, perfect. And then up and down, side to side there. Totally, cool. So there's that. Um, you can even uh, zoom in and zoom out by holding down Command plus minus. So um, to the left, one button to the left, one button to the right of your space bar, there's the Command key. And if you hold down the command key and look for the plus sign, plus slash equal sign that is located on the upper right of your keyboard and the minus key, okay? Basically, if you have an Apple computer, look for the delete button on the upper right-hand side of your keyboard. And to the left of that delete key is a plus and minus sign. If you hold down uh, the command button, whether it's left or right of the space bar, doesn't matter depending if you're right-handed or left-handed. If you hold on command and hit, uh, don't let go of command and go plus, 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 zooms in, hold down command, minus, 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 zooms out, okay? So you can zoom in, zoom out this way as well um, for Adobe Illustrator. So that's a really nice way of kind of operating and zooming in and zooming out. So the most common tools that I would say I use, um, you know, from not from creating, but the, the more common quick keys I use is definitely a space bar, left click, moving around the page, right? Um, and, then, uh, and then alt option um, or command, excuse me, and then command minus, 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 plus, plus, plus. Okay, so those are some quick, those are, two ways that you can zoom in and zoom out on the keyboard, okay? Now there's a third way that you can zoom in and zoom out too, which is insane because these programs, Adobe, you could do literally like three, there's three different ways of doing uh, one thing. 
So for every one thing you can do in this program, chances are there's three different ways to do it, okay? So let's take a look at the third way that you can zoom in, okay? If you hold down the space bar and the command key at the same time, so space bar, command, and hold down, don't let go, you'll see a plus sign, okay? And that plus sign, if you do a left click on your mouse, click is a zoom in. And you can zoom in holding the, the space bar and command key that way. So that's another way that you can zoom in, okay? And for Windows, it's control plus for zoom in. Yes, control minus to zoom out. Thank you, James. And to zoom out, take, try to hit the alt option key at the same time. So first finger space bar, second finger command key, third finger alt option. So three fingers holding down those three buttons, you'll see the minus uh, magnifying glass sign. And that's a zoom out. See how that works? So I can do space bar command, zoom in, alt option, left click of course to zoom out let go of the command alt option and goes to hand click hold move around see how that kind of works so typically everyone has a different feel for how it all operates right go with the one that feels the most comfortable the most natural to you so that you can uh, move about your artboard and your pages freely okay so um, I, for, uh, for me, it just, for me, it just seems more natural to, to, to hold down space bar and move things around, then hold down the command key to zoom in on an area and then alt option to zoom out. And then I can basically start working on that artboard. And that's literally just using a click in my left hand to make those adjustments. Does that make sense? And so, um, those are, those are a really great way to kind of set that up. Control space to zoom in, control space alt to zoom out for that last method too. Great, perfect. Thank you, James. So really cool ways to operate, but I use, I use those quick keys very, very often just for simple navigation, okay? So that's gonna help you guys for tonight for sure and even for future projects, okay? Now, let's go to the, um, the blob brush tool and the paint brush tool. Okay, I'm going to move to the second uh, artboard here by holding down my spacebar. So for the paintbrush tool, we'll start with paintbrush tool. Now we all kind of remember where paintbrush tool is located. Paintbrush tool is going to be located um, if I were to go back and just basically take my bar. So I'm actually going to reset my interface back to where it was before. Move this back over here and reset to essentials. So I wanna make sure I get back to essentials mode. So let's say this is your, um, your normal reset uh, mode for using Adobe Illustrator. On the left-hand side where the toolbar is located here, you should locate this tool, which is your paintbrush tool, okay? Obviously we know what that looks like. It looks like a little paintbrush, okay? Um, if you click onto that tool, okay, we're gonna activate the paintbrush tool, okay? It's also represented by the letter B, uh, like boy, on your keyboard. So remember how we use spacebar to activate a tool and, and uh, command plus to activate uh, a zoom in? The letter B, along with many other letters, are uh, special letters on your keyboard to activate tools. So those are additional quick keys. So um, if you ever wanna know, oh, what letter or what is the quick key to activate a tool if I don't wanna click on it on the toolbar, you'll notice the letter is, a, is in parentheses next to, or to the right of the name. And for everyone that did that exercise, you noticed that earlier this week, remember? You're like, oh, there's a letter T, oh, there's a letter B. Those are tools. And when you click onto the letters, it'll activate the different tools for you. And that is another quick, a fast way to jump between different tools. So if you feel like you like to memorize the letters versus clicking onto the tool on the toolbar, go for it. You're more than welcome. Um, I think once you have your favorite tools, you'll just remember the, the, the quick key or the letter that activates it in time. So I'm not going to worry so much about it, but I do know that B is for pen tool um, to activate that uh, tool. Okay. And it basically looks like the paintbrush, as we said. And what we're going to do here is um, we're going to look at our uh, properties on the right hand side and the properties here on the right hand side 
is literally what that is. It is the properties of the tool. So anytime I launch a tool, the properties panel that's located up here is basically saying for that tool on the left that you clicked on, this, these are the properties of that tool on the right. And you'll notice that the stroke or the outer line is in the color of orange with a thickness of 4.201. Um, I believe that's points if I'm not mistaken for the thickness of it, okay? We also notice here is a properties for brushes. So you can change the brush size right there on your properties panel, okay? And that's a really cool way of also making adjustments to the tool. So um, right here on the lower right, where the brush tool where it says brush, I'm gonna click onto that and I'm actually gonna try to alter the brush size to not a two point, but maybe I'll increase it to um, a five point brush. Five point oval is fine just to kind of start it out. And what you'll come to find is that the brush has gotten bigger from what it was before. So the way I know is basically because the there's like sort of like this round oval shape on the tip of the brush, the size has gone uh, from two points small to larger and you can even go even bigger than that to like a seven point round okay which basically creates that brush in that uh shape okay so the brush panel is really helpful to do to set that up okay oh but professor what about those other tools underneath that where it says basic and um they look like kind of like calligraphy and elements well those are um brushes and brushes actually is another cool way to change the style of a brush. So just to kind of backtrack, let's just say, for example, I want to use um, my seven point brush to make like this, you know, you know, huge unibrow on my character, right? I can go back to my brush click onto my basic brush here below that and switch the quality to not a thick brush, but a textured brush that you saw there. See how that kind of works? So you can, so brushes is a really great way to also change the quality of your painting or your brush as you're creating. And not only can you change a brush, you can also change the size of the brush by going here on the right where the second arrow is and increasing the size of, oh, let me go back on zoom there, and increasing the thickness by, by increasing the point size. So I went, I had a one point brush. This is what it looks like as seven points, right? I'm gonna go up to 10 or 11. Now I'm up to, um, you know, 11 points. Now the brush got really big, right? So what's gonna happen with this tool is that you guys will get to create or design um, an abstract face for each of the orange faces using the paintbrush tool, okay? So um, I'll give you guys like, let me give you guys like maybe a couple of minutes there just to kind of do one face, okay? Um, let's, we can do one together if you want. Um, and we'll just kind of create that one face, okay? So let's start over again. I'm gonna click onto the brush tool, which is B on my keyboard to activate it, okay? Um, I, I should see my properties panel on the right. And right here on the right, I should basically see a orange color, okay? If you don't see an orange color, you can double click onto that little square there, click, click. And should be able to uh, select a color from your uh, color selection list here. So you can pick the, the closest color to orange. Okay. And then you get to pick your brush size, which can be a, uh, let's just say an oval uh, brush size for right now. And we'll just go up and we'll do like a, like a five point oval uh, brush size. In fact, Let's, let's make it a little bit bigger. We'll go oval five points. And I'll go up to my points here, which is right above that. 
and I'll increase it from a one point to like a five point, or maybe let's make it three. Okay. I'm gonna delete that, delete, select that. And I'm just gonna kind of, you know, maybe create like an eye around here, dot it up, dot it up. And maybe create a set of eyes there. Maybe I'll create, have a little cool little nose and uh, maybe I'll do like a little, maybe a little crazy looking uh, person here. So looking a little delirious there probably. Oh, uh, there. Yes, Mio. What is that? Yeah? On those? Well, let me, well, I'm doing class right now, okay? After class, we'll get to play, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mio. Okay, my son is into video games right now. So he wants to uh, there. Roblox. So good stuff. Um, so yeah, um, so let's create some faces, okay? Let's go, let's go that route. Let's start with some orange. Let's do you know one orange, two oranges there. And let's just kind of work those oranges. Let's give you guys about five minutes. Is that okay? And after five minutes, we'll switch to the blob brush tool. Does that work for everybody? And we'll talk about blob brushes too. So we'll give you guys a little time to play, get familiar. I talk less, you get to create. Have some fun with it, okay? Um, use those quick keys. You can increase the, the brushes of the tool a little bit, okay? I'll, I'll stay online, I'll design a couple here as I'm going and you can kind of watch me do it um, as you're operating, okay? Uh, Alexis, I got your message. Let me verbally just answer the question. If the properties is not visible, if you go up to window, um, so if you're an illustrator, you should see on the menu below above it says window. If you click window and go down the list, it's in alphabetical order. Look for properties. If it doesn't have a check next to it, that means it's not visible. Click onto it and it should become visible after you click onto it. Let me know if that works. Okay, cool, I got a thumbs up. So that means it's, it's working for you there. Yeah. So. Cool, okay, perfect, all right.
Okay. I think I got a little bit carried away there for a minute. <laughs> it can be a little therapeutic, doesn't it? Uh, if you kind of roll with it a little bit. And uh, I have to put a happy face here because I, I was most of my stuff was kind of like angry-ish or crazy. So I'm like, uh, interesting how you, how the subconscious comes to rise a little bit in these exercises. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the blob brush tool. And then, um, and then right after that, let's go for like a small break. Okay. We'll take like a little, uh, short break and then we'll come back and we'll continue with some of the orange, um, some of the, excuse me, the blob brush tool. So how are you guys feeling about that? Is it feeling pretty good so far? Um, in terms of operations, if it does, you can give me a little thumbs up emoji. Um, it should feel natural. It should feel pretty fluid, right? Um, it should feel like um, like you can easily go here. Um, it can be a little weird to draw um, with a mouse, depending, right? But um, there is an Adobe Illustrator iPad app version which if you have an iPad, um, you could download the app um, for free and log in with your real Hondo email and access the same tools and your desktop computer will connect the same files on your iPad to your desktop. Does that make sense? So if, uh, if you do uh, decide to go for an iPad, um, because by the time class is over, we will be close to Christmas um, and you wanna give yourself an early Christmas present, then yes, this program will work on, on an iPad. And so, um, and it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you can see me via the, the share screen. Sometimes you, people hear me, they don't see me, but um, but yeah, so you can basically go that route too if you want to, okay? So um, I've, I've used it, it's, it's, it's good, it's pretty stable. Um, so you could do the exact same thing on an iPad and some, uh, a, a few designers or illustrators in this field are making that switch to get more of a natural flow and feel to their drawing um, because, um, well, now we can do both, right? And the responsiveness is, is really good um, for some of these lower generations. I believe you can, get a, you can get a decent ninth generation iPad, which is the new one for like $329 and get the program, get a, but you have to spend about $100 for an Apple Pencil. And, um, and then basically, you're ready to go. And I think the ninth generation has a pretty decent sized screen of like 10 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's a nice starter package. Um, if you really want to take it serious and take your game to a whole nother level um, using the app, the pencil and then going that direction. So uh, a little something to think about, but you could do, do the exact same thing, open the exact same files and they're interchangeable as well. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the blood brush tool. And for the blob brush tool, oh, before we go to the blob brush tool, I do want to uh, show you guys some of the vector lines that are happening in this design. So um, what we'll do is that we're going to actually take a look at the view or the, uh, or the outline view of this program. So if we go up to um, view, um, basically on your interface on, on Adobe Illustrator, if you click on the view, which is the view menu, You'll notice on the drop down at the very top, it says outline. Okay. Click on to outline and you'll switch from a colored drawing or colored brushes to now what you see is the vector line. Okay. Do you see it? Are you able to see that? Um, the, what you just created in with the paintbrush tool or with your paintbrush tool is, is essentially uh, a vector line, right? Um, and that line just so happened to be a certain color, a certain width, uh, a certain brush, right? But it's still a line. It's still a vector line according to the computer, but it's um, the outline mode shows us that it, that is purely a line that you just brushed in, okay? And so I wanted you guys to get a little familiar with it because all these pieces here are essentially the vectors that are happening in your design, okay? And that's how we know one, one vector from another um, is by going to outline mode. Um, it's also command Y on your keyboard. 
And so you can always kind of switch back and forth and see the expression and see how that vector is, was created. But these are essentially vector lines. All we, all, we, all we basically did was just draw a series of lines and the computer did all the other work. So whether you draw a squiggly line or two straight lines, it's still a vector line at the end of the day to the program, which just so happens to have a certain property, a certain width, a certain color, a certain brush. Does that make sense? And so that is kind of the secret to this program a little bit is that um, if you understand the vector and understand that it all starts with a line or a series of points that connects to a line, followed by the expression of a brush or a property of that, then you got about 80% of the program down, right? The rest is just knowing how to use certain tools and fill in those lines or those shapes that you create with it. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the blob brush tool. Okay. Now blob brush tool, similar tool. Okay. What's cool about this is that if we look over to, and let's go to my annotation here. If we look over at the same tool, which is the paintbrush tool over here, and we click and we hold the click, right? We get our hidden tool or, or our sub tools. And underneath the paintbrush tool is now the blob brush tool, okay? Which is also represented by shift and the letter B. So shift B will activate the blob brush tool. And the way you can kind of tell it's the blob brush tool is it um, on the toolbar basically looks like um, a brush with a square and a circle combined on the toolbar. Um, and the brush expressed on your screen next to it is not a black tip brush, but a white tip brush. Did, did you see the difference there? So a regular brush has a black tip, a shift B or blob brush tool has a uh, white tip. So that's one of the small differences to the tool. And really it does the exact same thing, the blob brush tool, except when I create a shape and I'm gonna switch it to blue. So before I click onto anything, I'm gonna double, uh, double click onto my colors and select a blue color option there. Okay. So I'm gonna get that uh, going there. Okay, very exciting. Um, let's go to a blob brush tool. And when I switch over and click and hold the click, even though it looks exactly like the, the brush tool, if I go to outline mode, okay? So view menu, outline mode, something interesting happens. And what happens is that the blob brush tool um, did not create a line in the center expressed outward. So inside out property expression, but what it created was an outside in expression. Does that make sense? So basically what it did was that it took the exact same information and it said, hey, rather than put a line in the center of this brush, let's actually create the line on the outside of the brush or the outside of that shape, if that makes sense. Okay. So blob brush tools, all it simply is doing is creating these enclosed shapes. And, and what's nice about that is that these are editable. I can click onto them easily with my selection tool, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But essentially, Blob Brush Tool is going to allow me to do the exact same thing, do different colors, different uh, widths on the on the brush sizes. Oh, switch that. But now I can um, modify some of the sizes of the brush and create enclosed shapes, which will look basically not like lines, but double lines or or just shapes as as a whole. And if I fill in those uh, shapes as well, it adds to it. So if you wanted to take one shape here, let's say like one line, and then let's say you did a loop, that's one enclosed shape. And then if you filled in that shape even further, it expanded it into a greater shape. So rather than have two different lines or rather or better yet, if I were to recreate this using the paintbrush tool, let's say I was gonna create the same thing here with the paintbrush tool, okay? And I'm just gonna paint it in, I have a little bit of a lag, but that's okay. 
okay? Two similar shapes, right? Two different tools. That's the, that's the difference. Do you see that? So paintbrush tool will do a bunch of lines and fill that in versus the blob brush tool, which makes this one clean outer shape or, uh, or outer vector for that line or that, uh, or that line essentially. Okay, does that kind of make sense there? So it's a really cool way to kind of see the differences between vector, um, between, the, between the vectors that are being used versus vectors. That, and really the blob brush tool just allows you to create cleaner lines, cleaner vectors, so that you can edit those anytime uh, at any point later in the future. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take a break, <laughs> give you guys a little bit of a five minute break. Uh, and then when we get back from that break, we're gonna um, uh, create some uh, blue faces using the blob brush tool, okay? And it will, same, same abstract expressions from there, okay? All right, all right guys, let's go ahead and take a five and then we will continue with the blob brush tool. See you then. Before I forget. Okay, so we have returned. And um, we basically are gonna try to do half the blue faces. So um, we, we could do the top row. You can probably do like one, two, three, four, five blue faces for the blob brush tool. Um, that'll be okay. And, um, and if you got all the orange ones, that's okay too. Um, but let's do like half, let's go half on the, on the blue ones. Uh, just so we can just uh, get a feel for the um, blob brush tool and, and just create and design a little bit there. Okay. Once we do those five, um, we can go ahead and uh, I'll walk you through saving the file. Um, and then we can upload that to Canvas um, at some point, um, you know, for this evening or the end of class. So we can go that direction too. Okay. All right. So let's take a few minutes there to do the blue faces. Um, let's give it about well, another five minutes. And I'll, I'll be on screen here, just creating some faces here with the blob brush tool. With the blob brush tool, um, let's take a look. Let's try and see if I, there's something I may be forgetting. I wanna make sure I'm not forgetting. Uh, that's a zoom in and, oh yeah, command shift. Okay, one quick, qu a quick little tip about the blob brush tool is, um, if you want to increase uh, the brush size using a quick key, you can use your uh, right and left brackets to increase the size of a brush. Um, what do I mean by that? Let me move this out of the way. Um, if you look at your delete key on the upper right-hand side, there should be a, um, a bracket. So uh, it kind of looks like a left and right uh, closed bracket. Um, it's not the slash or the forward or backslash, it's the key next to, to the left of the backslash, which is a uh, open bracket, closed bracket. Now, in, in the program, if you're in the blob brush tool or really any uh, brush tool for that matter, um, if you go right bracket, so if you click onto the right bracket and click, 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 click multiple times, the brush increases in size. Do you see that? And if you do left bracket, then it goes smaller. So this pro Adobe Illustrator and much of Adobe products has like three different ways of doing the same thing. So um, I like using my uh, right bracket and my left bracket to increase uh, brush sizes, which comes in really handy if I'm drawing. And then I wanted to switch like the size on something and make like it bigger, right? And then go back and make it smaller. So, so really helpful. Um, give, try that out, run for size, and see if that um, feels comfortable to you uh, using the left and right brackets, okay? Okay, and we'll go and continue to create with the blob brush tool. Thank you. 
ね。
All right, guys. Um, how are we looking so far? Pretty good. We got about five faces or so here and there. Okay. Um, so then why don't we, uh, let's see, let's do this. Um, let's kind of share some favorites and, and then we'll talk about saving the file and uh, how we can upload. So I'm going to include a little uh, Padlet. So I created really quick uh, another Padlet. And you can take a screenshot of your favorite face or funniest face or the one you're, you know, happy about that came out pretty well. And I'll include that into the chat momentarily so that we can just get a quick peek at some of the, the faces that you created. Um, just to kind of share and to see how it goes. No judgment. This is just, just to see how it's looking and, um, and how comfortable you're feeling about it. So I'll go ahead and grab that link and we'll just say, um, yes. And, and when you end uh, a screenshot on a MacBook would be command shift four or command shift three. Command shift four is more specific to, and you can drag over a certain area. So you can do that. Um, or, and I believe PC is command or uh, control print screen to kind of capture the certain area of your screen. So so here's the link. Okay, and then go ahead and just take a quick screenshot, share the your favorite there and close the draft. It could be one or two, totally fine, whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh yes, snippet tool, yeah. Thank you, James. So we can even use the snippet tool as well, which is pretty good. See if I can switch over mine. Oh. Uh, the link, did I place it in there? Oh, I sent it to Alexis by mistake. Sorry about that. <laughs> I sent it, I sent a direct message to Alexis. So if you here it is. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Very cool. I like the angry old man. That's fun. <laughs> Shit, did I have a... I have a little voting system here. I could have when I had a voting. Oh, okay, no worries. So yeah, shades look pretty cool too, fun. Very, very cool. 
So we're taking that. Ah, oh, yes, the what is that? The unit, the single oh, sorry. Cyclops. There it goes. I, I like I kind of blanked out there for a second. Uh, these are fun guys. Grumpy guys. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, abstract is interesting. I, I always, like I say, I always like abstract because, um, or I like going abstract in, in a little bit in the beginning because every design, the, le the level of interest is always based on the, 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 the interest of the, the viewer is based on the level of abstraction, right? So the more abstract something is, the more, the more curious people become because they want to, they see one, two or three things in their image, right? It's what keeps them engaged. Um, the abstract is really what kind of taps into like the subconscious in some ways. So um, that's why I always like to kind of run that from the get go uh, when it moves forward. These are great. Very cool, Nina. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah. A little winking happening there. Oh, that's cool. I like that one. Uh, that's okay. I know we get we get the idea. We just, I just wanted to get a little visual for it. But these are cool. Philip looking good. Yeah. Lots of fun, guys. Very cool, very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking great. Very cool. Is that like a Wario? Oh, it's Wario. I kind of, I kind of looked familiar there. Yeah. And so, yeah, you could do some really cool things um, when it comes to all the characters and all the different th paths and things of that sort. Uh, I missed this one. Oh, this is cool. This is very nice. The long hair and the, the clown. I, I like that. Or is it a mime? Clown or mime? It could be one of the other. Or both. Or both. There you go. So, these are fun, guys. These are looking really cool. I dig, I dig, I dig a lot. Okay. Well, if you're, and if you're still uploading, please continue to do so. Okay. Um, but just wanted to just share a little bit of the range. Um, and again, we're starting out. So, okay. Like you'll get better as you do more. So that's kind of the, the essence of the whole project pathways. Uh, we do more, we get better on the techniques and eventually we'll have some really nice pieces overall. So well done. Um, like this, like this a lot. And I think I see another one floating out there. There you go. All right. Looks good, Angel. Oh, yes. The ice cream spilling down. Very cool. Oh, like a little character. One's like laughing at the other person for spilling the ice cream, looks like. So way to go on the character there. Develop a little storyline. That's cool. Yeah, that's probably first for me. It's like, oh, laughing at the person with this ice cream on their face. So very fun. Really cool guys, well done. Um, I think I think we could push pen tool. Want to do we want to jump it? Well, actually, let's save our file and then we'll push the pen tool exercise and start a little bit there. Okay. So um, saving our files. Let's let's switch back to Illustrator. Um, if you're familiar with you know general saving on file formats, pretty pretty much the same when it comes to when it comes to um, saving your files on Illustrator, um, but we'll do we'll kind of walk through that process a little bit. So right now, the let me close the untitled here. Right now, the name of your file um, is currently um, up here in the upper left. So you'll typically you'll see like this little tiny tab, um, and that little tab is your file, right? So as you get familiar with opening up like new new apps um, on Adobe Illustrator, then what happens is, is that you'll have multiple tabs for like multiple files that open up. And so if I was gonna create just a quick new tab 
then you'll notice that um, with this new artboard I created, it's, a, it's called Untitled. It's like the second tab there, right? So when you open up multiple files in Adobe Illustrator and click onto those tabs, you can switch between one program or the other, okay? So right now, this tab that's highlighted in red is our exercise with the name, um, on a, with the name included. Um, I'm gonna save my file. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to switch over to desktop one so we can see the whole desktop. Okay, and whoop. here we go. And I should see a uh, full screen. And on the upper left side, obviously we have our file menu and try my best to make sure that Zoom doesn't kick it out. Uh, oops, no, that's a little bit too far. I want file illustrator. So I'll just click onto it. So we're gonna go up to file, okay? And under file, there's a series of settings here. New, new template, open recent. We wanna go down just to save as, okay? Now, um, whenever you're saving a file, um, you there's multiple ways that you can save that file, okay? We're gonna click on the save as, and the reason we're gonna do save as is because if I was, if I was gonna do a save, it would save it under the same name as what I originally gave you. So it saves the file that was originally given to you, okay? I wanna do a save as because I wanna get into the habit of typing our name in um, before the titles of these files. So I'm gonna click save as, and I'll get a window that opens up, which is our save as feature, okay? And I'll just kind of go here for a second there, set that up, okay. So on the top of my menu, I should see a save as um, with the file name that uh, was originally given to you. So that's the actual file name. Uh, what we're gonna do here is that we're just basically going to click onto um, the letter F or the space before the letter F. And when we click onto it, we should see a cursor that's flashing, a little white line that flashes on and off. I'm basically gonna just type in um, my uh, first and last name there, right? So first name, space, last name, space, space is exercise, okay? I'm renaming the file um, according to my update, my changes, okay? Um, I'm going to have it save onto the desktop. So if you guys have something that looks similar to this, I'm going to click onto desktop um, or save it onto my desktop. If you don't see it on the desktop, you can click onto the drop down menu and look for desktop. Okay. And I'm going to uh, look on the lower right, and there's a blue button here that says save. So um, I'm going to click on to save there. Okay. And when I save, I should get an, a menu that is asking me, oh, what version of Illustrator would you like to save it to? And as you do more uh, programs and as we have like more advanced programs, or more advanced versions of Illustrator, we're gonna find that um, not everyone has the same version, but you can save it according to certain formats. And so there, so at the moment, um, we could save up to Illustrator 2020 or the version for 2020, 2021, and it should save for that. But we can, but you notice below that is that you can also save it to earlier versions of the program. So let's say there is a, a studio or a designer or someone has like a very early version of Illustrator. You could technically save it under earlier versions going as early as um, Illustrator version three, which is kind of shocking to me that anyone's still using that. So, because uh, version three is like really old. So um, Creative Suite makes more sense, but, but we know that we can actually save it under different formats. But for tonight, we're just gonna save it under Illustrator 2020. Um, and we'll just use those pre-settings that are in there. So fonts, every, every setting that you see there should stay the same. You shouldn't make any changes to it. And we're gonna click OK. Uh, when we click OK, you'll notice instantly that the name shows up under your file in front of the word faces. So my first name, last name showed up. That's how I know 
um, that the save was successful because that name or that change occurred, right? Um, the other way I know it's successful is that if I simply just uh, look on my desktop or minimize the, the program, I'll find that the pro that it's uh, currently on my desktop here, um, the file. So it'll say my first name, last name, faces, exercise, and it, it should be somewhere on your desktop, essentially, um, somewhere near the screenshot, uh, if that's the case. Okay. And whenever we're moving forward and, and creating files, uh, we definitely want to start getting into the habit of, of having a folder to put those files in, right? Um, as you can see, I'm like super organized when it comes to my file setup and my file game is pretty in intense. Oh, um, um, you can save it under version 2020. So uh, the very top one is there. So um, we'll, we will be definitely getting into the habit of organizing files according to folders. So if you have like a Mac uh, computer, then you can definitely um, um, right click onto your desktop and or you can go up to the upper left hand side here and you can say um, create a new folder which i'll see there we can go to file new folder and or right click new folder and when the folder appears on the right hand side or wherever your space is available on your mac then you can basically um, highlight that folder click return on your keyboard and type in um the name of the course or the name of the file so if you want to call this gdsn 164 folder okay we're having a little issue over there um then you can save it under gdsn 164 press return and it saves under that folder name um, if you want to change it you just highlight that folder click the return key so it uh, kind of starts to uh, glow a little bit a lighter color of blue depending on your screen and you can rename it to anything that you want it to be. So if you want to call this um, Illustrator uh, 2021, you can hit return, it saves it under that name, okay? And um, if uh, any time, of course, you want to move the file like any other object, then you just click on to the object of the file and then literally drag and drop it into your new folder where it disappears um, and double click onto that folder and you'll notice that when it expands, it is currently there uh, under my folder, okay? So that's a, a quick way of developing um, a, a new folder and saving files within that folder uh, to kind of build it onto your Mac computer, okay? So having a, a an organized desktop is helpful. I do admit, I do go a little crazy this is it's never look it never looks this clean often um but i'm very happy when it does but you definitely want to try to get into the habit of having an organized file system file structure basically in this field as you do more and more files you want to get into the habit of keeping things as organized as possible um, for all projects and things like that so if i open up my tile lab home uh i have a lot of different files floating around um, but essentially I have like a client folder and within those client folders, um, are the projects that I have within them, but I, I like to kind of separate out, um, projects according to the names of the people that have brought those jobs, um, and, uh, and set them up according to that format. Right. Um, as long as there's some sort of naming system where you can actually like organize your files and put your illustrator file, um, illustrator files in those folders, I should say, then you'll have, you're ahead of the game. So uh, it's always great to, to have a file management system in the very, very beginning, um, client, and then moving into there. Um, if it saves automatically to Creative Cloud, um, you can do that. So that's no problem. We'll talk about Creative Cloud when, it, when we come to the next projects, um, because we'll be able to share your, your ongoing project as you're designing and creating um, from there. Okay. So uh, hopefully that helps, but I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of the file structure and the formats and see where we can go with it. Okay. Okay. Now, now that it's saved onto the desktop, you can now upload that file onto Canvas uh, when it's available. And I think we all know how to upload files to Canvas, right? Um, do we need to walk through that again? Does anyone want me to uh, show you how to upload a, a Adobe Illustrator file onto Canvas? If you do, you can give me a little thumbs up just for clarity. 
Okay, perfect. So we're, we're good there. Okay, so shall we try to make a, an attempt for the pen tool? How, how does that sound? Should we get a start, get a little bit of a breakdown, maybe draw a shape or two, and then continue on Tuesday? Does that sound good for everybody? If that does, a little thumbs up emoji. And we can start to play around with it a little bit over the weekend and see how you feel about it. Okay, so I'm gonna activate that, um, that folder. And I'll make some arrangements and I'll change the dates and things like that. But just to be on the safe side, um, I'll give you the pen tool exercise link and we'll just download it from the chat box. And then next week, um, and I'm just make, making sure that I'm loading things up properly because I don't want to confuse anyone if I load the folder and it doesn't launch and things of that sort. So let me, do, let me go ahead and grab the actual file itself. Mental exercise part one, and I'll put it in the chat so that at least you can download it right away um, rather than navigate uh, Canvas. So I'll, 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 I'll save you a minute there to kind of set that up. So let's do that instead. I think that's, that'll be easier. Okay, so download pen tool exercise number one. And Okay, perfect. So in the chat box, you'll see a Google file, which is the pen tool exercise, okay? So just like we did before with blob brush tool, uh, upper right-hand side, we're gonna go ahead and click onto that download button and we will download the file um, right below, okay? So everything's the same as we did for the blob brush tool. Um, when you click onto the file there on the lower left or upper right, if it's Safari, you should be able to open up the pen tool exercise, which I'll switch over here. Should look like this screen over here. Okay. And this is a, a full exercise. Well, I have like four versions of this or, um, four different versions. But basically, um, if I do spacebar command plus, 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 and I'll notice that the top, the, the name, which is Pentel Exercises, and a series of anchor point behavior signs right below it. And I'll also notice a series of exercise like the straight lines exercise, curve lines exercise, and a, and a few other ones right below that. So, we won't get done. I think we might get done with all of them, or at least uh, almost done with all of them. But we're gonna we're gonna make an attempt to use the pen tool. Okay. Now, a couple things to know about the pen tool is that when we're creating a straight line in the program, we have um, basically two fundamental types of lines happening here. We have your straight line. And we have your curve line, okay? So um, when it comes to creating a straight line, okay, you'll notice as we create a straight or, or any type of line that we're gonna create something called an anchor point, okay? The anchor point is basically, kind of looks like a little square here, okay? And when I click it, it looks filled in in blue on the upper right. When I'm um, away from it, it looks kind of like a white square with a blue outline, okay? So keep in mind that whenever I'm drawing a straight line, the anchor point, it looks like a square. And that is like a dot. Those are the dots that you're laying down for the program to connect for you. Does that make sense? So anchor points are just like connecting the dots. You're, you're, draw, you're, you're drawing the dot for the computer to connect, okay? So that's the first part. So those are called anchor points. When you, when you drop an anchor point, it creates a vector line automatically. And we'll see that in just a couple of seconds, okay? So that's just one fundamental right there. The other thing we wanna keep in mind is the curve line. And the curve line is similar to the straight line, except we have um, something new, which is indicated by the letter B. And, a is the anchor point. Notice how it's tiny, 
right? It's kind of small. So you'll kind of see them big or small depending on your, on your format. Typically they're a little bit smaller. So A is your anchor point that we just talked about. B is the handle, okay? And it looks basically like um, a line. So I have a anchor point here, anchor point here in the red arrows, okay? And I'm gonna change it to blue. But, some, but over here in blue, this is a handle, right? And the handle is coming from the anchor point. Does that make sense? So that handle, think about that handle as like a magnet, okay? And that magnet is pulling the curve or the line, the straight line upwards into a curve. So think about it like that. Think about that handle where B is, that circle basically. Think of it as like a magnet. And whenever a curve is drawn um, and you have a handle, your straight line turns into a curve by pointing or bending towards the direction of the curve. So it's kind of, I think of it like a magnet in a way. So it's bending towards the handle. It's bending to be the, the, uh, the, the anchor, or excuse me, the handle, which is indicated by the letter B. It's going in that direction, okay? And so I can move it up and down, I can change it. So. Those are two fundamental ideas that you that are core to uh, drawing with the pen tool. Okay, so let's draw some. Let's draw a couple of, of straight lines and let's call it, draw a couple of curve lines. Okay, let's um, jump back to the program and let's get let's get a few minutes of it. Okay, so move this out of the way. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to zoom in on straight lines on the upper right, which is the star, okay? And we're going to activate the pen tool, okay? So here, I'm going to go up to the pen tool. Now, if you remember, pen tool is gonna to be on the toolbar up here, and it's going to be a little bit closer towards the top. So. If you have a single column toolbar orientation, it's button number three um, shown there in the blue. And so that is the pen tool or the letter P like Paul for pen tool is right there. So there's my little red arrow to replace the blue. Okay, that's your pen tool. Okay, when you click onto that, then you should see um, a, a tip of a pen or a old fashioned pen in black and that is your uh, pen tool there, okay? Those points, those anchor points will actually be dropped from the tip of the pen, okay? So that's where it actually uh, ends up dropping a point or anchor point, okay? When you look at the exercise, it really simply says, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, click here, click here, click here, okay? Now, before we start clicking, just I'll show you right off the side here what, we, we, what the points do, okay? If I just do a click and another click, I created a line, right? I'll show that, show you again, okay? So pen tool, click once, I have a anchor point. Looks like a little tiny blue square on my screen, right? I move and I do another click, click, I created a black line, right? And then this little uh, vector that's following me, that's basically um, sort of like a, like a pre-line trying to follow me to see where my line's gonna go. It's there to kind of help you see in advance where the other points are gonna be. So that's, that's, a, that's a straight line, okay? So a click, first point, and then click, hold the click, pull, that's where the handle shows up. Do you see that? So there is a, so a straight line is a click, click. A curved line is a click, first, then click, hold the click on the mouse and pull, and that's a curve line. So you're, you're gonna find out very quickly that holding a click and pulling on the mouse will create a curve versus a quick click. Does that make sense? So it's very sensitive at the end of the day, this program. It's a very sensitive program. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Click, click, straight line, right? Um, click, click, hold the click, pull is a curve line. So it's sensitive is what it is, okay? All right, let's try, let's draw a first star, okay? I'm going to go to number one, 
Okay, I'm gonna do click on one. Okay, I'm gonna go to number two, click on two. I'm gonna go to three, click, four, click, five, click, six, click, seven, click, eight, click, nine, click, 10, click, don't worry about not seeing it, it's there. And before you finish, you're gonna take your mouse and go back to number one, and you're gonna try to put the tip of your pen at the exact same position as the first point on number one, okay? So try to land your tip of your pen at the exact location where number one is, where you first clicked, and you should see a little tiny circle on the lower right of the pen, of the pen tool. When you see that circle, click, click again, release, and you've now closed the shape. Does that make sense? So the circle represents, I'm about to close the shape, okay? It's a circle, it, it completes. How many of you guys successfully created your first star? Give me a little thumbs up emoji there. Okay, great. Real, not too bad, right? So a couple of takeaways here is that every time you click and, um, and continue to click, the line follows, but you, whenever you wanna close a shape, or turn it into a closed vector object as it's called, you always have to go back to the first point you started, look for the circle, close the shape. Does that make sense? Because if you don't close the shape, let's just say I didn't close the shape and I went and I was off, what happens is, is the line still follows me, right? And it's saying, hey, we're still following you. And so we're not, the shape is not closed. So, um, the way around that would be to hit the escape key, but you technically have an open vector or a gap in your vector object, right? Which tends to be a problem later when you're creating t-shirt graphics or, or production ready artwork. So, but if you did, congratulations, you created your first uh, shape. Now, the number 10, I didn't see professor, it kind of disappeared on me what happened. Basically, if you look on the lower right of your of of your toolbar, where it's, where it has fill and the stroke, every time you create a new uh, shape using the pen tool, if it's in white, that means your shape has a filling or an inside color of white. And when the stroke is black, that means that the outside of that inside of that shape will be black or the, or it's going to have a black outline. Does that make sense? So the fill on the inside represents the inside color, the picture frame or box that's on the outside, which is underneath the fill, looks like a little black picture frame on your toolbar. That means border outside color is black. Okay. So anytime you're creating a shape, be aware when you're using the pen tool that it always defaults. Default means it originally begins with inside white, outside black. So for the next exercise, we'll, we're going to make the white transparent or empty, okay? So we wanna make that clear, basically. So we're gonna fix that right now. So here's how we're gonna do that for the next exercise. I'm basically going to go to my fill, okay? And it's clicked, it's basically set up there, right? And right underneath it, there is this red slash, a box with a red slash, okay? If you click onto the red slash there underneath, arrow number two, the one on the bottom, it basically turns that white fill into a clear fill or transparent fill. Do you, and do you notice the, the, the circles or the other half of the circles are, are now visible if you're still selected to your star? Um, if you are, great. If not, don't worry. But basically, if it has a red slash over it and an outline of color of black, then you're moving in the right direction. You're okay. Okay? Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's take the last nine minutes here to draw a circle. Okay? Let's get that curve going. So I'm gonna hold down my space bar and I'm gonna move over to the right and I'm gonna look at my uh, circle here, okay? Now, don't freak out, I'm gonna walk you through it. Basically what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to say something like, 
click, hold the click, drag to two, do not click on number two. Go to three, hold the click, drag to four, do not click on four. Does that make sense? We're gonna be creating handles. Um, and handles, well, well, you'll see how it feels in just a second, okay? It's gonna feel a little weird. So let's go ahead and draw this circle, okay? First of all, we're gonna, uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, click, hold the click, okay? Drag to number two, release, do not click on number two, okay? Do not click on number two. We're gonna go down to number three, okay? We're gonna click, hold the click, pull down to number four, release, do not click on number four, do not click on number four. We're gonna to go to number five. We're going to click, hold the click, drag to six, release. Do not click on number six. Okay, do not click on number six. We're gonna to go to number seven, click, hold the click, drag to eight, release. Do not click on number eight. Okay, do not click on number eight. We're gonna to go to number one. Now, before anything, move the tip of the pen over the one, look for the circle, okay? And when you see the circle, click, hold the click, pull back to number two, release, do not click on two, and you're done. Okay, you see, now you see how that felt? Felt a little different, right? That's pretty much how it feels when, it, when you're drawing on this program. This whole holding the click, pulling, and drag, and, and not clicking into areas, that's, a lot of what this program kind of feels like. So if it felt kind of weird, that's okay. Um, the more we do, the more we're gonna get used to that, okay? How many of you guys had a successful circle though that got it through? You know, a little thumbs up emoji there or a little thumbs up. Great, that's awesome, right? Now, if the circle didn't show up, anyone not, not have a successful circle or didn't close, maybe, maybe give me a little thumbs up there where it was like, or an ill X, we're having a little bit of an issue there, okay. All right, no worries. Um, you know, we can, let's try it again if that works for you guys, okay? So we'll do this one more time and um, and I'll, we'll stop it there. I think we'll be okay, right? Because I can feel the, ah, like this is, my brain is kind of melting a little bit, okay? So let's try one more time, okay? So that's the, because we, what we're basically doing is creating a handle. Okay, and I'll show you what that handle does in a couple of seconds. So we'll, we'll start from the top, okay? Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, pen tool, okay? I'm going to um, simply click and hold and not let go of my mouse, okay? So I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna hold the click, okay? I'm gonna pull to number two, release, and I'm not touching two, okay? The why, the reason why is because number two is a handle and a handle pulls the curve in the direction I want it to go, okay? So it's a magnet, think of it as a magnet, okay? And I don't wanna click on two, so don't click on number two, okay? If I did, then basically it creates a line to two. You see, how, see what happened there if I did that? It created a line to two, I don't want that. I just want the handle to exist. And we have to get used to the idea of a handle basically. Okay, I'm gonna to go to three. I'm gonna click, hold the click, pull down to number four, release. Do not click on number four. Okay, do not click on number four. I'm gonna to go to number five, okay? I'm gonna click, hold the click, pull to six, release the mouse. Do not click on number six. Okay, do not click on number six. I'm gonna to go to number seven. I'm gonna click, hold the click, pull up to number eight, release. Do not click on eight. Okay, do not click on number eight. I'm gonna go back to one. Okay, I'm gonna look for the circle, there it is. Okay, it's just hovering over. Click, hold the click, pull back out to number two, release, and you're done. Okay, how many of you guys did that better this time? Give me a thumbs up where it was like, oh, I got it now. This is making sense. Okay, cool. So um, very different from brush tool, right? Very different. You know, one is free form. The other one is like pre-programming it almost. But here, let me show you what the handle does. Um, 
so you can get a little bit of a feel for it. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to actually change the, the, the black outline to a red so that you can kind of see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, so the handle. So basically the, ha the way this handle works is, and I'm going to make the layer disappear. So I have a curve, the curve is red, right? The handle is blue with a circle at the end. When I click onto this um, handle and I pull, the curve follows it. Do you see that? So what handles do at the end of the day is that it just pulls the curve in the direction of the handle. That's all it does. So when I pulled the handle, all it was doing here in this, it was just taking the curve and pulling it in the direction of the handle. Does that make sense? It's like gravity. So handles are like gravity. They have this crazy pull, gravitational pull that pulls the curve towards the handle. So if you like the planet analogy, you know, like the curve is pulling towards the, towards that planet, you can go that direction or magnet. I like the magnet analogy, okay? So if I take another handle, right? And I click onto that other handle and pull it, I'm gonna, oh, Go back to mouse mode on there. I click, hold, and pull. Then it goes in the direction of the handle. Now that other curve is going in that direction, pulling it in the other direction. So now this curve is going that direction. Does that make sense? So handles, all handles do is that they're pulling the curve in the direction of the tip of the handle, which is typically a little tiny circle as the graphic representation, okay? So, when students see this for the first time, we have to do at least two or three, maybe even four versions of these exercises just to get it, the muscle memory down and get very comfortable with it, okay? So we, we, I have four different exercises that we're gonna launch next week where we practice on each one, okay? So one is with instructions, another is without instructions. Eventually you're gonna learn how to trace an image without instructions and turn that into a, 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 a um, collage base using those shapes. So one exercise leads to the other, leads to the other, leads to the other, okay? So there's a method to the, to the process, but the first thing is first, we have to understand uh, handles and uh, apply those as such, okay? All right. Um, we got enough to get you guys going. So if you wanted to practice over the weekend, go for it. It will make you upset. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you right now, it, it's gonna tick you off. Um, so don't worry about it. I will walk you through each step of the way, okay? But if, you, if you're feeling kind of you know, bold, go for it, give it a shot, uh, try it, okay? Um, but it will, it, it will make you go, what? And, and make you think twice for sure, okay? So curves with corner points we'll work on next week, combining curves with straight lines. And we'll do this curves with corner points and tweaking the handles, which, is, which is, looks a little complex, but it's not too difficult. But we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna press through that, okay? And, all, and, and next week, and for the next few weeks, we're basically just gonna level up our pen tool skills to uh, closed vector objects, to regular objects. Um, in fact, I'll give you a sneak peek for, next, uh, for, for the next few weeks where we're heading by showing you my deck over here. So um, basically we're gonna be moving on, eh, nice uh, annotation, there we go. So basically we're gonna get it down to um, uh, learning how to trace like, so, like characters um, to which then we're gonna build shapes with those trace characters or basically we're gonna trace characters then we're gonna trace shapes we're gonna take these shapes and create abstract faces out of them or abstract characters using those shapes um, from there. Um, and, we, and we see some really cool examples of that being done and whatnot, so that's pretty awesome. Then we're gonna level up and go advanced and we're gonna show you how to do production ready pen tool exercises using that Mickey graphic. So I'm gonna walk you through how to trace that Mickey graphic, how we literally do it at Disney. So um, I'm gonna show you how we create production ready artwork for t-shirts, for products, the Disney way of using closed vector objects. So you're gonna do the middle one 
And then we're gonna turn that uh, graphic eventually into like a, a, a t-shirt. Um, so uh, we'll cover that a little bit. Um, we'll probably hit pattern exercises eventually too. So we'll turn that into a, a t-shirt and that will take us into the t-shirt project and we'll make a really cool t-shirt there, which is another deck. And then after the t-shirt, we're gonna come back to minimalist posters um, and we're gonna uh, basically create a minimalist uh, inspired posters using this program um, to which we'll uh, later I'll talk a little bit more um, about just, you know, how to create minimal graphics and that'll, I don't have it on this deck here, but eventually it's going to lead to logos. Um, and then once we get down to logos, then we build our portfolio and we are done. So um, there's a lot of work to do between now and there. And people are like, damn. And so, yeah, it's going to be great. But, but believe me, we're going to, every, it's works. It's going to work and everyone's going to hit some pretty awesome levels here. I would warn you that the t-shirt is definitely going to feel like a stretch. So right when we get to about here, it's going to be like, Oh man. And so um, it's going to feel a little bit like a stretch and then minimalist poster will probably take us a, a little overboard. Um, but, I, but once we, we, once we get to minimalist and we go down, every, you, you guys feel like a million bucks afterwards. So that we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the intensity of the workout, but we're, we're now getting into the nuts and bolts and we're going to have some really cool things to kind of play with in between. Okay. All right. So uh, hopefully that helps. Tonight was a very productive night. I don't know about you guys, but I think it was super productive and um, I think we're good and that's awesome. So feel free to play with it. You can come back to this video when it's available. It should be ready by tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. So um, it'll be available for you guys to review it and play with it um, over and over again. And, and let me answer a couple of questions. Um, do we turn the assignment as is or should we finish the faces? If you're doing the abstract faces, um, you can turn it in as is, that's fine. Um, you basically did a few faces plus the five blue ones, you're okay. You can go ahead and turn it in as is, we'll give you full credit for that, okay? Um, so you're good guys, we're, we're ahead of the game. Next week, like I said, I'm gonna review one more time what we just did tonight with the folks that were not here and, and we'll brush up one more time and then we'll go deeper into pencil exercises for those um, for that full two hours for next week. But we got, we got an early start for, for next week, so I'm happy for that, okay? All right, give yourself a tap on the, tap on the back um, and go get some sleep. So I, I definitely put some pressure on you guys this evening. It was good. You got that good, got a good pre-workout. All right, guys, you are dismissed. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. And I will see you next week. Have fun playing with the program uh, if you decide to play around with it over the weekend. Okay, we'll see you then. Bad. Good night. <laughs> I'll see you on Thursday. See you next Tuesday, Laker. Have a good night. Okay, bye. See you then.